that's our fully equipped safari car. Now check this out. There, now it's our house on wheels. <laughs> Getting a good safari car when you want to go on a self-drive adventure is absolutely essential for your comfort. It will be your home, it will be your kitchen, and basically where you'll spend a lot of time. In this video, we're going to go through our Toyota Hilux fully equipped safari camper, and I'll give you some tips on what extra you should bring. So let's start with the car itself. Huh. This is my babu repellent, which is very handy when you have pesky baboons that want to steal your stuff in camp. We're not going to talk about that, we're going to talk about the car itself. It's a 2.4 liter diesel engine and it's obviously 4x4 with 4x4 high and low gear and you have the diff lock as well. So it makes your life easier if you get a little bit stuck. It has two batteries, two spare tires, an extended diesel tank of 160 liters. So on this trip, I don't think we will need the jerry cans at all which is good. It has a solar panel on the top and inverter so you get to charge all your gear. And it's also very comfortable to drive in this car, much more comfortable than the slower uh, big Land Cruisers that I don't think really people that wants to go on self drive safari needs those cars. They look cool and all that, but it's really not necessary. And this car will get you from one bush to another much faster and much more comfortable. It's basically so sufficient in the bush and I can charge all my camera gear here if I need to. There is also a connector plug here. When the campsites have power, I can connect that to this power outlet, which is great. Here you have the inverter, the electrical system, and we have a lot of potatoes and basically use this as a pantry. But now for the fun stuff, let's go to the canopy. inside here is where we can take refuge from let's say the rain or if we have um, unexpected guests in our camp it's where we sleep we have storage room here let me show you the bed real quickly that's uh, on the top there it's a bit tight when I'm filming as well but let me show you we drag this down like so there here we sleep it's quite nice. We have an overhead light there. We have a lot of pockets here for our books. We can also close these blinds here if we want to, but it's really nice to just lie here, look up at the stars outside. Wow, lovely. Okay, moving on. And the beds hold, bed holds like this. We also have another light here because of this space sleeps for people. I think that would be stretching it a little bit, but it's certainly possible. So this basically becomes a double bed. We have a lot of storage, two big boxes, one under here and one here. The innermost contains the vehicle recovery kit with a high lift jack, the tracks for when you get stuck or if you get stuck in mud or sand or anything like that, a tire repair kit for slow punctures and a first aid kit. In the next box, we just store, well, basically our luggage. Underneath here is our frying pans and pots or some pots and the dishwasher or dishwashing uh, basin, or whatever you call it, a bucket. Then we have our fridge here. That's where we store all of our goodies. It's a 40 liter fridge. It's plenty enough for two people or four people if you plan well. No worries there. Uh, what else can I say about the hotel? We have two USB chargers and we also have a very clever reading light on both sides. So that's very convenient. Then we have a few extra pockets here and there is a hatch for reaching out into the kitchen. Speaking about the kitchen, let's visit the kitchen. This is where we store all our canned goods. Some dry thingies like uh, crackers and we have pots, we have cutlery, wine glasses, coffee cups, mugs, everything for four people. Plus we have that fridge I talked about. I really think they have thought about everything and it's so neatly organized. I just love this car. I think it's the best one I've ever had in the bush and I've had some, I haven't really had any good cars. I've only had crappy cars, but this is definitely the best one as you can see, hopefully. Let me see inside here yeah here's another compartment with uh, spices and stuff like that we also have a gas cooker 
So as you can see, you have some uh, thingies here to shield the wind because if we didn't have these and it's a bit windy, it would take forever to boil our coffee water, our precious coffee water. We have, um, it's not really a feature of the car, it's just how we have organized the back seat because we have divided this into like half and half. So one half is my half and the other is Ilda's. Let's have a look. We have a, a bit of a sun situation or a light situation. It's not the best uh, for filming this video, but there you go. We have to work with what we have. But that's my side. That's where I store or organize. I'm trying to organize my photography gear so I can reach it quickly if I see something. And this is Ilda's side over here. This is an extra that we purchased. I think it's very handy to have. You simply put it on the back of the seat, it contains extra pockets. And this is where we have our toiletries and uh, some bug repellent and various other stuff. Some girly stuff for Ilda right there. And a deck of cards. Hmm. So this Toyota basically have everything you need to stay self-sufficient in the bush which is fantastic. That's how we want to do it when we go on our self-drive safaris. And to me, this is a luxury hotel compared to some of the other cars I've used when in Africa and for some strange reason survived. But that's another story. You can check out this video if you want to figure out how that was. We rented from Bushlore and I've rented from Bush Trackers before. And you also have a Vis Safari, I think. But um, I would go for either Bushlore or Bush Trackers, preferably Bushlore. I think they are a very professional, a very service-minded. And this particular car is from 2019, so it's about to be retired by Bushlore, so to speak. And when you have these older safari cars, you can get them on a buyback agreement. That basically means that we have to pay for the service of the car, insurance and tracks for Africa. But if you are going on longer adventures, this will be cheaper. We are staying here for six or seven months. But if you are only going for a couple of weeks to a month or a month and a half, I think it's a better option to rent a vehicle. So you don't have to think about insurance and all that jazz. As for car options, I think the Hill Cam Edition, the one we have, is a better option because it's comfortable to drive on the tar road and it's faster than those Land Cruisers. It's also a step up from the normal Hilux Edition with a rooftop tent. It was a little bit more hassle to take up and down the tent. This is a much better option. Then you can of course go for the Land Cruiser if you want to look really cool at a much steeper price, but I honestly wouldn't recommend it because they are just huge and bulky vehicles and they drink a lot of uh, fuel so this here I think is the better option definitely bring a good flashlight and a headlight mine are from LED Lancer I think the the flashlight is 2000 lumens something like that and the headlight I have is 1200 lumens and the great thing about these I'll link to everything down below is that we can charge them from the canopy up where we sleep so they are always ready to go in case you need to go out in the night to pee or something like that it's very handy to have a flashlight so you can actually see what's going on in the night yeah right out of it. Some of the camps that we are visiting, they have lions in the night. The next thing I would suggest you get for a self-drive safari is a good pair of binoculars. Mine are from Brown. Links to these also down in the description. They are 8 times 42 so that means I think it's a 8 times zoom for these and they are quite nice even at um, the crack of dawn and dusk. Then I would definitely suggest that you bring games. We bring our favorite game that we always bring, Backgammon. Yes. And a deck of cards just in case. A question I got on my Instagram is what do you do when you get stuck or if you get stuck? Rule number one, you have to keep your cool. Rule number two is to bring enough water. When I was traveling by myself, I did not have a satellite telephone, but I did have enough water. I think I brought 60 liters of drinking water and a 25 liter uh, can or whatever you call it uh, of just water that I can do the dishes in and stuff like that. So if you have enough water, so you can sort of wait out this terrible situation that is to get stuck or have a breakdown, people will eventually come along. I've been to some, some pretty remote places in the central Kalahari and I've got breakdowns and I've been very lucky to be saved the, the next day or didn't spend more than 
16 to 20 hours, I think, before helped arrived. But this car has all the recovery kit you need, I think, unless you're really unlucky and the, the wheel falls off or something like that. But I would never be worried in a car like this. Even if something happened, you have so many tools to, to help you. Now we are going to the pool, but that's a pretty extensive walkthrough of our Toyota Hilux Hillcam Edition. Just to give you an idea on what you can expect of such a car. Baby, are you happy about the car? I'm really happy. She's really happy about the car. If you have any questions, please do drop them below. And if you like this video, you should probably check out this one after where I drove around for six months in a very questionable car in the bush of Botswana chasing lions. Right, that's it for now. Hope to see you in the next video. Please do subscribe and leave that thumbs up and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, bye bye.